Well, good morning, and welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Irv Rich. And before I even start our podcast today, I'm going to just ask, have you ever had a relationship with someone uh, like a wife, and a boyfriend, mother, father, whatever? To have the relationship is to have communication. And to have communication, you have to talk to the person, and that person has to talk to you. Now, back in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had a relationship with God. They walked with them and talked with them, and God talked with them. Uh, but then they sinned, and they broke off that relationship. And because of that, mankind is born in separation from having any kind of relationship with God. And the only way that they can have this relationship is they have to be brought back to communion with God. In uh, last podcast I had, I spoke of reading God's Word and the importance of it. And that's God speaking to us. Well, today we're going to be looking at us speaking to God. And it's in uh, reverence and habitual prayer. And that's what this article is about that I'm about to read. But just remember, to have eternal life and to have a relationship with God, it's not through religion. It's through a relationship with God himself. So with that said, I'm just going to read this article. It was put out by STEM Publishing. It was written by William uh, Hawking, and it's entitled Reverence and Habitual Prayer. Now, last, uh, like I say, last podcast, I wrote to you about the necessity of systematically reading the Word of God. That's God speaking to you. Now, I desire to make a few practical remarks on the subject of prayer. And the article goes, and in the first place, I feel impelled to say that it is extremely necessary for you to remember that in prayer you are addressing God. The psalmist said this, Unto thee will I pray, my voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning I will direct my prayer to thee, and will look up. Psalms 5, verses 2 and 3. Prayer is the exercise of a heart, Godward, in earnest petition for necessary blessings. Though persuading you to know this elementary truth as well as I do, yet I believe I am not mistaken to suppose you are in great danger of forgetting the high and holy character of the one to whom you pray. I am not now overlooking the fact that God is our Father and that our relationship to Him is very near and dear, but at the same time, He is God as well as Father, and therefore, uh, a spirit of reverence becomes us and is necessary, inseparable from even true prayer, every true prayer. We ought not to forget that the privilege of grace uh, never removes uh, or eliminates the responsibility of the creature. On this account, uh, seek to uh, feel in whose sacred presence you are. Bow down your heart before him. Have it impressed on your very soul that he is omnipotent, uh, that he is omnipresent, uh, that he, uh, he, he all the attributes of God, that he reads your innermost thoughts uh, more easily than we can read a book. God knows what we're going to say before we even open our mouths. He knows what's on our mind and our hearts. You will admit, I am sure, the tendency for your heart, even on the solemn occasions of addressing the Lord, 
whether silently or audibly, to wonder to other and uh, proper themes. In the language of Scripture, your lips draw near, but your heart is far off. This arises from the lack of appreciation or apprehension of or from the fault of forgetting the real nature of this sacred occasion and the inexpressible holy presence into which you come. You find, I dare to say, that you fall into the snare most commonly during habitual prayer in the morning and evening. For example, you suddenly become aware that you are uh, quite mechanically uh, presenting the ordinary rounds of petition. At the same time, your thoughts are traveling in all directions. This fault, if unchecked, will cause your prayers to become vain, repetition, hateful to God and injuriously instead of beneficial uh, to yourself. The only safeguard against this error is to take care before even you commence to prayer to have it well on your mind that you are about to address God with whom you dare not trifle. The soul of the believer will then uh, in uh, instant Shall, I'm sorry, your, the soul of the believer will intensively assume the proper attitude of reverence and God's fear. But I refer now, just now, to the practice of obituary, habitual prayer. This is an important point and demands the word of two. I hope it is true of every one of you. For prayer is undoubtedly the secret source of spiritual power, and just as the natural body requires regular supplies of air and food, so does the soul even need regular supplies of heavenly grace to meet the constant uh, vicissitude of daily life. You should therefore make it a very rigid rule to spend an allotted time in earnest prayer at least twice a day. You must arrange these seasons according to your own particular circumstances. But morning and evening are certainly the best times. I, in saying twice a day, however, I only mention the minimum allowed allowance you will doubtly, doubtless uh, collect there is a scripture for praying always as well as everywhere. So wherever opportunities you may have in this respect, you are at liberty to take the full advantage of them. Some are afraid of making a rule, but I think they have more reason to be afraid of breaking it when it is made. I hope none of you would seek to excuse yourself for uh, passing a whole day without prayer by the plead of not wishing to be in bondage to a rule. For myself, I must risk the chance of being somewhat uh, commonplace by saying that I think good habits are very good thing to possess and bad habits are very bad thing to get a hold of and worse things is to get rid of. While the best way to avoid bad habits altogether is to acquire good ones. Be persuaded therefore to put yourself, if necessary, to a great deal of pain to become an orderly Christian. And remember, they can be no spiritual order in the soul unless it is right in the right frame, God work. Open your Bibles and let God speak to you. Fall on your knees and breathe out your request to God. 
The Christian is like a diver at the bottom of the sea whose very life depends upon the maintenance of a connection with the surface. There is nothing around him to sustain life but the reverence, uh, the splendor, uh, the slender tube supplies him with the air to breathe, and in his hand he holds the means of summoning help from above the most in a moment of danger. But this connection must be maintained constantly. Even so must the believer be in continuous continuous, not uh, just once in a while, communication with the power on high. This must be done by regular habitual prayer. If you start the day with prayer, you are not so likely to forget to pray before you give a, a passionate reply to the person who insults you to your face and it says pray without ceasing hoping the lord permits to return to this subject now i have a poem prayer is the soul's sincere desire uttered or unexpressed the moment of the hidden fire the trembling in the breast prayer is the burden of the slight the falling of a tear, the upward glance of an eye when none but God is near. Prayer is the Christian's uh, virtual breath, the Christian's native air, his watchword at the gate of death. He enters heaven with prayer. O though by whom we come to God, the life, the truth, the way, the path of prayer, thyself halt trod. Lord, teach us now to pray. And that was written by James Montgomery. And with all this said, I'm just going to leave the podcast. But remember that it's a relationship, not a religion. And if you have, if you don't have this relationship, you can have it through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in him that we have life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me.